Good evening, Centennial. This is Minister Horton, your Bible study teacher, coming to you again. Amen. Thanking God for another beautiful day that He has blessed us with, a day that we can all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I'm here also to continue to encourage you uh, to keep the faith and hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. If you would take time and bow your head with me in prayer tonight as we begin our service. So, gracious Father, we thank you for right now for the Opportunities you allowed us to come before you in your presence. Saying thank you for another day you are blessed with. And thank you for also for your grace and mercy that you took us through. Father, we thank you for giving us courage to go through these trying times. I know there's so much going on around us, Lord, but we know that you're able to carry us through. Bless the sick shed in the fortune around the world. And bless all the, uh, the ones that are working so hard uh, doing this uh, invisible disease but lord take care of us and strengthen us we know that uh things have getting better only because we know that you is in charge and you're going to take care of us if we keep our trust in you we know everything's going to be all right we thank you right now we give it the honor the praise and the glory in jesus name we pray amen thank god amen we all honor praise to our father which is in heaven to his son jesus to the precious Holy Spirit and to our pastor and sister pastor and their wives and to my wife, Mr. Pauline, and to the entire Centennial Church family and friends. Amen. Let me say this unto you. Grace be unto you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I said that to say this. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. I mean, every Thursday night, we used to always say, and that's our, our student, our class, how... Is your church and how are your church family? And the response always be, I'm blessed. And I know that you're blessed if you got God on your side. Amen. Amen. So we're so thankful tonight and we're praying that God will bless this word tonight. And we hope that you will get something from it tonight because it's a beautiful lesson that we have for you. Amen. Coming from the book of Proverbs uh, chapter 18. And we start tonight in verse 11. And so Solomon said this, The rich man wealth is his strong city, and as a high wall of his own conceit. Let me say it again. The rich man wealth is his strong city, and as a high wall in his own, I use the word imagination, what he think. Nothing wrong, let me explain that, nothing wrong with being rich, but we shouldn't let it become our God. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Here in verse 11 here, he shows uh, what did the false and deceitful defense of a rich man who has his portion and treasure of things in this world. And guess what? He has confidence in his wealth. And he expects as much from it as he can get. And so, well, the word, well, the word, what he thinks of his wealth, he thinks he can get everything out of it. And whatever he so desire. Amen. But his, his wealth also make him a, make uh, his wealth, his city where he dwell, where he rules with a great deal of self-complacency. And as though the whole city is under his command, I'm in control. Because I got this, I got that. It is his strong city. And he thinks when danger comes, hallelujah, when danger comes, he thinks nothing can hurt him. He believes in what he has, nothing can hurt him. His scale is his pride. His wealth is his wall in which he enclosed himself. And also he thinks it's a high wall which cannot be scaled over. But I stop by the church today. There's no high, uh, wall too high. There's no uh, place too wide. No place too deep. That God can't see through. He have all sin and I. And we cannot get away from him. Can I get a witness here tonight? Amen. And so it's just like. 
When a man built his house upon sand. And when the storm came, and when he really depended on it, and the storm came, he washed it away when he most needed it. And all of a sudden, the rich man will. It become of no value to him. And then when we really need it, when he needed, when the, the house was built, he left when the, 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 the builder needed, when the rich man really needed his finances, he won't do him any good. Amen. Let's take us back. If you don't mind, I'd like to go back to, to, to verse number 10 on last week. And Solomon said these words. He said, uh, uh, he described the firm and the faithful defense of a righteous man. Hallelujah. Which, which is in the name of the Lord who is a strong tower and a place of refuge for him. We have a place to go to. When things get rough to us, all we have to do is go to God. And everything will be all right. Amen. We we know we know we have been blessed with material things uh, on, on this earth. We know that. But the church, listen, the church has not been promised material blessing. God has, as believers, He blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, if you want to take a look that up, go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. Amen, amen. And so a child of God, strength is in the strong tower of the strong city, which has a high wall around him for protection. Hallelujah. And what we need is the knowledge of the word of God that we can recognize. We, hallelujah, we are here today. We are living in very difficult times and we are being tested. We see the coronavirus. We see uh, uh, jobs being lost. We see the economy is bad. But we live in a very difficult time, but the knowledge of God's word can, we have that so we can run to for our town or city. And be safe. So our treasure is not laid up in up on earth. Our treasures are in heaven. Can I get the witness here? And so when our time runs out and when our life comes to an end, I thought about to tell you, brothers and sisters, we cannot buy salvation. We cannot buy eternal life, whether we're rich or poor. We need my brothers and sisters, we need the word of the Lord of the house, strong tower to run into for our protection and safety. We need that. The righteous here, hallelujah, the righteous is always safe in God's own. Can I get a witness here? Because whatever we need, whatever we desire, God will supply it according to our riches, or his richness and glory. Can I get a witness here tonight? But I have something I'd like to leave with you tonight, if you don't mind. If you return your Bible tonight to Luke chapter 16, verse 19. Talk about the rich man and Lazarus. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and flared sumptuously every day. He done well every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, designed to be filled with crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. And it said, Moreover, the dogs came and licked his soul, the only comfort that he received. And so it was that the, the time ran out when the beggar died and was carried, listen, he was carried by the angels. To Abraham's bosom. And so the time ran out on the rich man. He also died, but he was buried. And being in torment and hated, he lifted up his eyes and he saw Abraham before off and Lazarus resting in his bosom. Then he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And send Lazarus there, he made them. The tip of his tongue. 
his uh his a tip uh, his finger in the water to cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Hallelujah. If if the rich man could hear the testimony of Lazarus, Lazarus would tell him, say, I've been through the fire and I've been through the flood. I've been broken in pieces, left all alone. But through it all, hallelujah, God bless me. And I still have a praise on the inside of me because I'm safe in the arms of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we find in verse 25. But Abraham said, he said, son, remember that in your lifetime, you received your good thing. You had your good time while you were here on earth. You didn't seek or ask uh, the Lord to be your savior. But you had your own, you trusted in your righteousness. And likewise, Lazarus, even thing, Lazarus went through pains and suffering. But now, to anyone close to you right now, say, but now. He is comfort. And guess what? You are tormented. So tonight, I'm going to let you know tonight, trust in God. If anyone here tonight, uh, here, listen tonight, is not saved, or have strayed away from the Lord, I beg you tonight, go back to Jesus and ask him to forgive you for the sin that you have committed. Trust in God. So when that day comes, when your life ends here on this earth, you be able, or I be able to go to our place of refuge where we'll be safe in the arm of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. May God forever bless you. May God forever keep you. And may he ever his peace shine upon you. At this time, we'll bring to you, Minister Paula. Hello to my Centennial Holy Land Church family and to anyone who's watching us on today. Thanks for joining us for our Bible class. It is my sincere hope that you get something from the study of this lesson on today. And without further ado, we're going to get into the study of today's lesson, Proverbs 18 and 11. But before I do that, I definitely want to acknowledge my pastor, my assistant pastor and their wives. Um, also, the Bible class instructor, Minister Harden and his wife, to the ministers, to the deacons, to the trustees, to the mothers, to the ushers, and to everyone else in their respective places. It is an honor and a privilege to be before you to give to you what the Lord has given unto me. Amen. Amen. And also I want to say happy Thursday, Sunday to everyone. And right before we get into the study of Proverbs 18 and 11, the Lord had put upon my heart John 16 and 33. So we're going to go there first and we're going to read that just to encourage ourselves, just even in these times that we can still have hope in Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go to... John 16 and 33. Amen. And John 16 and 33 reads as such. It says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. So even though we're facing this time of adversity, um, we can still rest. And be certain that, guess what? Jesus has already overcome this, amen? And this too shall pass. But what we have to do is we have to continue to be faithful unto him, amen? And trust in him. He's already overcome the world. So if he already overcome the, overcame the world, guess what? This COVID-19 is nothing for God, amen? Amen. So let's be faithful. Let's continue to pray, not only for our country, but for the entire world, amen? And let's continue to be steadfast in the word of God. Amen. Amen. So for today's subject, I'm going to be speaking specifically to the youth, but I believe that it's still applicable to everyone, but it's going to be titled called to flourish. Amen. How many know that even though we're living in this time of adversity, I'm still called to flourish. Amen. As a child of the most high God, guess what? One of my rights in the kingdom of heaven is called I have been called to flourish, amen? So I can flourish regardless of what's happening in the economy, regardless of what's happening in the world. I am called as the daughter of a king to flourish, amen? So we're going to be talking about that in verse 18, excuse me, chapter 18 of verse, in verse number 11 of Proverbs. So let's go to Proverbs 18 and 11. All right. In Proverbs 18 and 11, it reads as such. It says, 
The rich man's wealth is his strong city and as a high wall in his own conceit. Amen. So in verse number 11, it's contrasting verse number 10, which we went over last week. So in verse number 10, it stated, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and it's safe. So the righteous man, safety is in the Lord. But see, in this particular passage of scripture, chapter, excuse me, verse number 11, the safety of a rich man is in his wealth. Amen. But guess what? Let's go over to Proverbs 11 and 28 and let's see what it says about the rich man riches. Amen. And when the rich man puts his faith in his riches. Let's go to Proverbs 11 and 28. We went over this some time ago, but I believe that this particular passage of scripture is still applicable to verse number 11 in chapter 18. So we're going to go to Proverbs 11 and 28. Here we go. Proverbs 11 and 28 reads as such. It says, he that trusteth in his riches shall fall. Mm. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Amen. We are called to flourish. The righteous are called to flourish. Amen. So what we have to understand is when a man puts his trust in his riches, guess what? He will fall because you never know how what state you're going to be in. Amen. You Just like the pastor stated, you can be up today and down tomorrow. You never know. And even with the volatility, even with the market, with the stock market, you don't know if you're going to have money or if you're going to lose money. Amen. So we cannot put our trust in money. And I hope that this particular pandemic shows us that if we don't put our faith and trust in God, guess what? We will fall just like the rest of the world. But guess what? We can put our hope in Jesus. Amen. Because he will never fail us. And so I want to encourage the young people on today, even though we see a lot of things in the media, like people on reality TV with nice cars and different things like that, do not be fooled. A lot of that is a lie. Amen. A lot of that is rented. They don't even own what they say they have. Amen. Don't be fooled and try to be like somebody else. Guess what? Because God has already promised us. If we seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, guess what? All those things will be added unto us. We don't have to search for riches because guess what? Riches are in the kingdom of God. And if I'm a child of God, guess what? And I reside in the kingdom, those riches belong to me. But what we have to do is we can't be caught off guard and be distracted by what we see other people have. Amen. God has given us what we need and he'll give us riches amen but we have to seek him first amen he doesn't want anything to be put before him amen his word says he is a jealous god and he will have no other gods before him and that goes for anything amen he will not have anything before him amen so with that being said let's go on to first timothy we're going to go to the sixth chapter and the 17th verse that's first timothy 6 and 17 amen and I think this is just really well put, and I think it's very applicable to this lesson as well. It says in 1 Timothy 6 and 17, it says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded. If God blesses you with riches, don't take it to your head. Because guess what? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So guess what? Whatever you have, guess what? It belongs to God because this earth belongs to God. Amen. So when God blesses us, don't be high-minded. Still be humble. Amen. It says, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. He's saying, trust in the living God. Amen. Who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So here's the thing. Sometimes there's a misconception that Christians don't have anything, that God won't bless us. That's a lie. Amen. Because God will give us all things richly. Amen. Isn't that what the scripture said? He will give us all things that we need. And even some of the, he'll give us the desires of our heart. Not just some, he will give us the desires of our heart. But we have to make sure that our hearts are aligned to his will. Amen. And then he will give us the desires of our hearts. So don't think that just because you serve God, you're not going to have anything. You're going to be broke. Look, God will bless you. But what he's saying is don't be high minded. Don't be boastful. Just acknowledge God. Amen. And seek him first. And guess what? He'll give you whatever you need. Amen. Amen. And last week, we're going to go over to, I want to say it's Matthew 6 and 19. Amen. We're going to finish up right there. And I believe that's a good scripture to conclude on. 
So Matthew 6 and 19, I actually might read over to the 21st verse. So we're going to go from Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Amen. Amen. And it reads as such. It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doeth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. So what we have to understand is put your treasure, lay up your treasures in heaven. Amen. Where nothing can destroy it. Amen. So a lot of times we put too much emphasis on this world. But guess what? This world is not our home. Amen. We have a heavenly home that we're going to go to. But guess what? We have to prepare for it. So we have to store up treasures in heaven. Amen. And do what we can on this earth to store up those treasures in heaven so that we're, we don't have to worry about someone coming and stealing it and taking it from us. Because guess what? If our treasures are stored up in heaven, guess what? Nobody can get them. God has to release them. Amen. So I just want to encourage the young people on today to be encouraged and know that God has a plan for your life. And the plan is great. Amen. And that he will bless us. And if we seek him first, guess what? Everything will be added unto us. So let's not put our trust in our money, in our things, or other worldly possessions. But let's put our faith and trust in our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we're going to um, go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for this day. We just thank you for being God and God alone. Father, you reign and you are supreme and you are awesome. And we love you and we bless you. Father, we thank you that you've called us um, into the spirit of adoption to be your children, oh God. And we thank you as children, God, that we don't have to seek after worldly possessions. Because guess what? If we seek after wisdom, guess what? We already have everything we need and desire. For there are riches in your wisdom, oh God. Oh God, and we thank you and we praise you and we bless you that we're going to go to your word and we're going to go to you for everything that we need, oh God. Father, I thank you that we're not going to put anything before you, oh God, but that we're going to acknowledge you in all our ways and you shall direct our paths. And Father, I know that we're living in trouble sometimes, but God, I thank you that you've given us the peace, peace that, sh excuse me, peace that shall surpass all understanding. Father, I thank you that you've already given us just the spirit of victory, that we know that this too shall pass. And Father, I thank you that we're going to continue just to abide in you. And even as we go through this time, God, I thank you that we're getting stronger and stronger. Father, I thank you that we're getting wiser, and I thank you that we're seeking you more, oh God. God, I ask you just to touch the minds of the young people, oh God. God, give them a heart and a desire to thirst and come after you, oh God. Father, you have riches that they can never imagine, oh God, but Father, I know that those riches are in you, oh God. And for, Father, they have to seek you in order to get those riches. So Father, we ask you that they seek you for all that they want and desire. And everything will be added unto them. And Father, I thank you just for our church family. I ask you to bless us, keep us safe, keep us healthy, and keep us in your perfect peace. Father, keep our minds stayed on you. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus. And also, God, be with the bereavement family in their times of sorrow. God, strengthen them and let us come together as a body to be with them and to lift them up in prayer. All these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God.